Hello and welcome to this topology optimization demo on a formula SAE suspension upright. In the interest of time, I'll be using the solved model to go over the workflow and point out key settings used. I begin by importing a suspension upright geometry from the University of Utah formula SAE team to a static structural analysis. Next, I increase the optimization design region using the pull tool in SpaceClan to thicken the geometry. A larger design region provides more freedom to optimize the geometry in locations that are taking the loads. Then I take my thickened geometry and create a static structural analysis that reuses the loads and boundary conditions from a previous ANSYS how-to video called Static Structural Analysis of a Rear Upright Part 2, as shown in the bottom left. The results of the static analysis are fed into the topology optimization analysis, where the thickened geometry has been optimized with a 29% reduction of mass compared to the original geometry. The optimized geometry can be transferred to a design validation by right-clicking on the topology optimization results and selecting transfer to design validation system in the workbench project schematic. The design validation analysis is then solved. Results can be compared to the original upright geometry and further analysis on the additive manufacturing process may be simulated using the additive wizard. Now let's take a look at a few of the key settings used. In mechanical, we have the solved static structural model that feeds the results into the topology optimization analysis. It is recommended to use a uniform mesh, so in the global mesh controls, I have the quadratic element type selected with a 1.25 millimeter element size. The resulting mesh is shown. The model has multiple load steps with different loading directions representing different loading scenarios. The level set optimization method is used with a 2 mm exclusion thickness defined by the boundary conditions shown in red. The objective is set to minimize compliance or maximize stiffness for all load steps in the static structural analysis to account for different loading scenarios. A mass response constraint is used with a retainment range of 10 to 33 percent mass. I have also included a member size manufacturing constraint that limits the maximum member size to 12 millimeters. The optimization results are shown in the topology density and a smoothing object is inserted using right mouse button on the topology density. To transfer the optimized geometry to the design validation the export model option must be set to yes. The validation model requires linear elements be used with about the same element size previously used. If the geometry has issues meshing, it is recommended to put in a patch independent tetrahedrons mesh method control. In this case, I have set the refinement to off to avoid excessive mesh refinement in complex regions of the optimized geometry. The resulting mesh is shown. The validation model does not like the cylindrical support, so that boundary condition has been replaced with a deformable remote displacement with all degrees of freedom fixed. Once the model has been solved, we can take a look at the total deformation and equivalent stress results. These results may be compared to the original geometry model results. In this case, we see the max deformation increased by about 14% and the max equivalent stress increased by about 4% with a 29% reduction of mass. The additive manufacturing wizard could be further used to perform additional analysis on the additive manufacturing process. With that, I will conclude this demo video. Thanks for watching.